This video is sponsored by Domestica. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Guide Runner, a series where I casually guide you through the creation of a piece of my photo manipulation artwork, giving you a little insight into my thought process with a few tips and tricks along the way. So, the idea for this week's piece came about while scrolling through my Instagram feed. I came across this image by Rodrigo. I loved the concept and it immediately got me thinking about the story of the Iron Giant and certain visuals from the film Ready Player One. And so, feeling inspired, I set out to start compiling stock images that I could use to create my own robot human tag team. But before any work begins, I'm also on the lookout for reference images that might be useful along the way. In this case, I knew I wanted the image to be set at night, allowing me to emphasize lots of pretty mechanical glows and lights. Images from the movie Pacific Rim sprang to mind, so I made sure to include them in my reference folder. I've got the images ready to go, so the first step is setting up the backdrop for the artwork by combining some simple ground and sky stock images. Dropping in this 3D asset which will form the body of our robot, I'm pulling in quite close for this composition which is going to allow me to push focus on certain elements that I'll introduce a bit later on. I needed a head and I've gone with this slightly more cutesy looking robot. The aim is to create something more colourful than the Iron Giant with plenty of neon colours, slightly cyberpunk-esque and I think this style of head will lend more to the character of the piece and the overall vibe. But immediately it's clear that it's all looking a bit too clean and smooth. I want it to look more battle-worn. So I've got this grungier looking robot and I can start cutting out any useful parts and placing them onto our robot. But before we continue, let me introduce today's sponsor, Domestica. Domestica is currently the fastest growing online creative community that produces awesome online courses in-house with the best talents worldwide helping students develop their creative abilities. And the great thing about Domestica's courses is that they are for all levels, so whether you're a beginner or a hotshot looking to expand your toolset, there is something for everyone. Now I'm often asked, I want to learn Photoshop but I don't know where to start and do you have any recommendations? Domestica's basic courses are ideal for anyone interested in getting a comprehensive course on Adobe software. Areas covered in the course range from illustrating, drawing and painting to an extensive variety of design courses including graphic design, 2D and 3D design and so much more. The Domestica in-house team is constantly on the lookout for the best teachers, allowing students the chance to take courses from a renowned designer, artist, photographer and learn from from their creative process. And the cool thing is, each course includes a signed certificate that you can download and add to your portfolio. There's no membership fee or subscription with Domestica. You just create an account and pay for the course you want and learn at your own pace. With very accessible prices and regular discounts, it's definitely worth checking out. To help kickstart your journey with Domestica, I'm sharing a special 10% discount code that will be valid for the next 30 days. This grants an extra discount on top of any offer already available on the courses at Domestica. I'll drop a link in the description below. I'm also going to borrow some of the paint scratches and rust from the surface just to give our robot some added texture. And then using this image of lines and setting the layer blending mode to overlay just to give it that LCD screen look. We've got another nice photo of some rusted metal just to keep building up those layers of detail. Starting to reintroduce some colour to our robot using adjustment layers to paint where needed. There's lots of straight edges on our robot so I can get away with using the lasso tool for the most part. If things require a little more accuracy such as painting curved edges, that's when I'll pick up my stylus pen and use my graphics tablet for better accuracy.
We've got this slightly exposed section around the middle and I wanted to extend that further so we could see a little more of the inner workings and mechanics of our robot. Fortunately, the design pretty much provides a nice guideline to cut out these rib sections. I can then copy and paste some of the mechanical parts and clip them to our new rib layer. Using these cool LED tubes, I can warp those into position so that we can see them running under the robot skeleton. These will act as a nice source for some pretty lights and glows. Allowing the robot design to dictate the best positions for them, I then add more light power sources to the body, adding highlights when necessary and hinting at some ambient lighting. Although this is something I'll come back to properly later on once I know the robot is finished and all of its elements are in place. I'm not fully decided on the colour choices yet, but I'm just getting something down so I've at least got something to work with. I like the idea of this robot having a more customized urban feel, so to do that, I'm going to drop in these graffiti images and start applying those to different sections of the robot. I usually just scroll through the different blending modes, picking the one that creates the best starting position to then make adjustments. I wasn't too sure if this idea would work at first, but I think it's turned out alright, and it just adds a little something extra. Now introducing the human element for this piece, the robot's companion. I'll be honest, I must have spent about three hours at least looking for a good image. I initially wanted to have the camera angle lower down looking more up at the robot and human, which would possibly have resulted in a slightly more interesting and dynamic final image, but this guy was the best I could find with the time I had available, so we end up with a slightly more straight on view. Working in some shadows so he feels planted to the robot, I'll most likely have to change these as the lighting of the piece develops, but these will do for now. The robot's still looking too shiny and new in certain areas, so hopefully a few patches of metal and bullet holes will sort that out. You would get a better result cutting the holes out and blending them individually, but this is speed art after all and I'm not going for perfection, so I'll find the best position for the bullet hole image and then apply a blending mode and erase what I don't want. I found this neat image of a helmet with some twisted metal, so I spent a few minutes blending that and whoa, that looks rubbish, so I got rid of it. And time for some lighting and highlights, mostly choosing to paint them in without adjustment layers, simply because of my digital painting background and it's how I'm used to doing things, but definitely use them when possible, especially with client work. It seems every time I come to highlights I use a different method, uh, there's no explaining it, I just kind of do whatever I think is going to look best in the moment. Whether that's painting them in manually, using adjustment layers or blending modes.
and using a large soft brush just to paint in some ambient lighting. And got to get a lens flare in there. Like the robot in the early stages, the kid is lacking a bit of character, so I'm going to add a few additional clothes and accessories just to add to that retro vibe. Okay, not too far off now, so I'll let these final moments play out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the final image reveal. Please leave a like and comment if you've enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that bell to stay notified about any new content.